What is going on, people of the world? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the International Podcast. This is your very organic host, Noah Williams. I'm feeling grateful and I'm feeling blessed to bring you guys this new content, this new episode. And as I keep pumping these episodes out, I really, really do appreciate the love and the support that everybody's been showing. Thank you for all the shares. Thank you for the retweets. Um, thank you for everything, the comments, uh, all of that. That stuff is all positive energy that I'm feeding off of. And it's helping me make these make more videos, come up with new ideas and new plans for the podcast. So with that being said, this is officially episode 15. And I want to title this the Russell Westbrook complex, right? Because episode 13, I did the Lonzo Ball complex and I, I really just drew Lonzo Ball's career to this point as we know it. And I kind of connected it to like the real life kind of thing as an athlete and what we could take away from his experience. And people really liked it. I got a lot of positive feedback from it. So I was like, you know what? What's something else that I could do? Uh, something similar where you could take another lesson. And I looked at Russell Westbrook because I think Russell Westbrook is such a, a polarizing player, um, such a unique player and such a unique character and figure um, in the media and, and in the sports world and community. Uh, so I feel like he is a great com- person that I could draw a great comparison from. So with that being said, I want to call this the Russell Westbrook complex. So. Um, Russell Westbrook, as we know, is an MVP in the NBA, uh, well-respected player, future Hall of Famer, been to the NBA Finals. Um, the triple double is really his 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 trademark, his stamp in the NBA. He's he's the guy who really accomplished the impossible since Oscar Robertson. Uh, what was that? The '60s, you know. So seeing somebody like that come along, it was so rare, and it caught so strong, you know. And and we were all in love with his loyalty and his ferocity and, you know, his intensity and his passion and his love for the game. And I feel like that's what got him so many fans. That's what made me as maybe like a 12 or 13 year old kid really fall in love with him and and become a fan of his when he was in Oklahoma city, because he would bring, you know, that electricity to a stadium. Um, And that's really what he became huge for, famous for, being that energy guy, being that good leader, you know, being that strong figure, the MVP caliber, all-star caliber, jersey sale guy. You know, that's those were the things and those are the things that he brings to a team and that he brings to an organization. Um, But at the same time, though, he does also bring a little bit of bullheadedness is what I want to want to say is probably the best way that I could I could describe it I mean I would either say he's bullheaded or sometimes stubborn or overly confident but it is great to be confident um, as I spoke about on that episode 13 and and this is kind of like taking uh, the things that I spoke about on episode 13 and and running with them as well because I spoke a lot about having an ego and having a lot of confidence um, I think Lonzo Ball was a case where you have not enough confidence, right? And I think this Russell Westbrook complex, I think this is where you might have too much confidence and too strong of an ego for yourself. But I'm going to dive into that as this as this uh, episode continues. So just bear with me and, and uh, hear me out here. So establishing what Russell Westbrook has done in the NBA, he has that MVP, he was on, on the Olympic team. Um, he's been to NBA finals. And since KD left, Oklahoma City, Russ has been the face of, well, he's been a number one. He became a number one, even though when KD was still there, he was still shooting more shots than KD, which is absolutely absurd to me, which kind of speaks on his character um, and the player that he believes that he is. Um, But that's besides the point for right now. So KD leaves and it really gives Russ the opportunity to shine as that one, the one A, the alpha, the dog, you know, the the face of the franchise in Oklahoma City. And he really thrived in it. He got his MVP that year. He coined a triple-double. And um, from there on, we kind of seen that triple-double become not only an expectation, but it became like a – it almost became easy. It's like, okay, how does every single night he do this? And it's incredible that he does it. But then I really started to watch it after a year, the second year he did it or the third year he did it. And it's it really became stat inflation and a guy who was more worried about a statistic than team success. Now, 
I'm not quite sure what he expected out of his team at the time because they had to go against Golden State. Like, he should have known, like, they weren't going to be Golden State in a seven-game series. So maybe he was like, fuck it. Like, I know my team isn't going to have the great team success, so I'll just do all this individual stuff to get my name out there and to become a Hall of Fame player and do some historic shit. But it was such, inf- like, stat inflation, and it was so whack to me. Like, like, bro, just go out and play the game normal. Like, why is you out here seeking, going out your way to get a rebound when your teammate right there to get a rebound? And y'all could get in a better position if you run the break. You feel me? Just such little stuff like that. Like, little stuff like that. I feel like that stuff adds up when building a championship environment. And that's one of the problems that I feel like I have with Russell Westbrook and his ego and the way that he is and and how strong-minded. And it's both a good and a bad thing, how strong-minded and how hardly he believes in that triple-double and getting that triple-double and getting his stats, you know? So if you look at his season this year, um, in Washington, what he's brought to Washington is this is John Wall trade. Now, now Washington had to trade John Wall and a pick uh, to get Russell Westbrook. So since they got Russell Westbrook, they are dead last in the NBA. These guys are three and eleven. Um, Russell Westbrook's averaging eighteen point one points a game on thirty seven percent from the field, thirty percent from the three, and sixty one percent from the free throw line. Those are all absolutely terrible numbers for his position, for any position really. Um, he's averaging 9.7 rebounds, 10 assists, and 5.2 turnovers. So he's right around that that triple. Well, he's damn near at a triple double right now, but he's also averaging five turnovers a game. Um, they just recently lost to John Wall in the Rockets. John Wall outplayed Russell Westbrook in this game, and it really kind of just speaks on Russ as a skill ball player. I think with Washington they don't play the same way that Houston or even Oklahoma City played. So prior to the season, when you really look at the trade, it's like, okay, John Wall, we don't really know what he's going to be um, coming off of these injuries. Russ Westbrook, we know what he is. And I feel like as the Wizards organization, they believe that they could have got, they could win with, with Russ. Um, they could be a playoff team with Russ. And that's not how it's been so far. They are literally the worst team in the NBA. And I know it's only they're only 14 games to the season, and I get that. Like, I understand that part. But instead of 82 games this year, it is 72 games. So these 14 games here, they've already put themselves so far behind the eight ball that it's going to be an uphill battle for the rest of the year. Yeah, you have two tremendous talents in Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook. Um, Bradley Beal's at, leading the NBA in scoring, and he's shooting an efficient clip. Um, I believe he's shooting like 40, 48% from the field, averaging 35 points a game. So he's shooting and scoring at a high volume. Um, if Russ could improve his shooting percentage and just his efficiency as a player uh, and maybe change his play style a little bit and maybe, you know, drop the ego a little bit, um, they might be more successful as a team. Uh, this makes two years in a row Russell Westbrook went to a team and they got worse. When Houston had Chris Paul, they were better off than when they had Russell Westbrook. They had a better record, and they went further in the playoffs. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think about. Russell Westbrook's track record really just shows that he's a very much ego-driven player. Um, I know it is very important to have an ego, especially being an athlete and being anybody in any profession, in any career. It's important to have an ego and it's important to have that confidence that you carry yourself with. And I'm not trying to reprimand him for having an ego, but I feel like if your ego is so strong that it outdoes your performance, whether that's performance in graphic design or performance on a basketball court, um, if you're great and usually the better that you are, the more likely, you know, your, your boss or your owner or not owner, your boss or your manager, um, they're going to give you more leeway. You know what I mean? They're going to give you that longer leash. But when your actions, negative actions, that is, are too much where your talent no longer can cover up for it, like, okay, let's say, for instance, you're going to fall into a tough place just because now you're no longer an asset, you're a liability. Your actions, your ego, your attitude, 
um, your negative energy has created a negative space for the team or for the group or for, um, you know, the whole department or whatever it is that you're doing. So you're no longer a value to that organization. And that is, I feel like, exactly what's going on for Russell Westbrook. I feel like Oklahoma City traded him because they did realize, like, okay, like, we can't win with him anymore. The image is kind of fading away. Nobody really cares about the triple-double thing anymore. So let's ship him to Houston. Houston said, okay, I, th- he is good. He can. He's talented. He can make big highlight real plays. Um, he can galvanize the troops sometimes. But his attitude and his energy is way too fucking strong, and it's way too radical for him considering he's not getting us to an NBA Finals or he's not getting us into a late playoff run, if that makes sense. Like, he's only doing so much for the team, and, like, his actions – and his attitude and his personality is too large for that. Like, he's damn near like a chihuahua. You know what I mean? Like, a chihuahua's got more bark than he does bite. And I feel like Russell Westbrook is somebody who has more bark than they do bite. Um, And we see it time and time again where it's almost like he just keeps running his head into a wall. Um, And he won't stop running his head into this same wall. I mean, we could look at it from that Portland series from a few years ago when he was still in Oklahoma City. Um, every time Damian Lillard would get a bucket, Russell Westbrook would out of, absolutely out of control, put his head down, try to either run at the rim, pull up from three, just something every time Dame scored. And it's like, okay, I get it. Like, I understand the competitive drive. I understand the one-on-one, but now your little one-on-one mental battle with Damian Lillard is sacrificing the team. You're, the team isn't as good now because you want to go in a spell for two minutes where you're not going to pass the ball for two whole minutes. You're just going to shoot every time because Damian Lillard's giving you buckets and making you look like a fool. Now, those are the type of things that I'm talking about when I say his ego is too strong. That is coming at the at the detriment of the team. It might be personal benefit because you look at the box score at the end of the game and his stats are pretty good. He might have 30 points on 32 shots. You know, so those are the kind of things that when I say his ego is too strong, those are things that he needed to put in check. Like, I feel like people got at KD so much for leaving Russ. It's like, why would you leave Russ? You have such a good team. Well, he was playing with with Russ, who was taking more shots than him. KD is a scoring champ. He is a perennial MVP candidate. The best scorer I've ever seen ever, ever, ever. And in my opinion, right now, he's the best player in the world right now. So for you, Russell Westbrook, to be taking more shots than him is absolutely absurd. Like, how are you a point guard taking more shots than him? You're used to – that still boggles my mind to this day. But it really just speaks on his character and it speaks on his ego. You know what I mean? Who he thinks that he is um, maybe as opposed to who he really is, you know. And that's the problem with a Russell Westbrook. And that's why I feel like he'll never have that real success in the NBA until that ego is gone, until that ego is changed, not gone, but changed um, and improved and worked on. Because you can't be the alpha, I feel like, every time. You can't be the most strongest personality every time. I feel like you got to bend a little, you know, give a little, take a little, especially when you're trying to build a championship environment, a successful environment, a comfortable environment for everybody um, in a workplace. Because the NBA... I always say this, man, the NBA, every athletic league, sports in general is the perfect metaphor for life um, because of the things that they experience. And and it's so it's so beautiful as a sports fan um, for me to be able to sit back and analyze these players and study these players and follow these players for years um, and the positive things that they do and the negative things that they do both on and, and off the field or the court or the track, you know, wherever they are. Um, and see the things that I could align myself with and see the lessons that I could take from these certain people. You know, I think that's the biggest thing for me. And that's the point, um, the, the, the structure of the, these complexes is really analyzing these careers and seeing what we could take from them, you know? And I think the biggest thing from the Russell Westbrook in his career that we could take away is his ego, his strong ego. And, um, stubbornness. So I feel like that really speaks to closed-mindedness and lack of trust of, the, of his coworkers and the people around him. 
I feel like that's probably the best way to really analyze somebody like a Russell Westbrook. You know, that really, really strong ego, very, very confident in themselves. Now, they're so confident in themselves, it's like they're not confident in others, you know. And that's not always a bad thing because it is hard to trust others in a workplace. But sometimes you got to buy into the program. I feel like that's the way that life goes, though. But, you know, what do I know, right? Um, But, yeah, no. Back to Russell Westbrook. He has just proven to be stubborn, a stubborn player who's not really open to change. Um, He changed for a little bit. He, He altered his game a little bit in Houston. And that led to him not being happy, and he's out of there after one year. So let's see what the rest of this Washington year does and how it pans out. I mean, I still wish the best for the guy because I don't wish badly upon anybody. Um, I really try not to hate on anybody, but I do just call it how I see it and I call it how how it feels and I call it how I feel it is. You know, if you're giving me signs, I'm going to take those signs and make something of it, you know. Um, and I feel like that's how it should be. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how the rest of this pans out in Washington for Russell Westbrook. Hopefully they can right this ship. Hopefully they can get it right. But, you know, with that ego and, and the stubbornness and, and the character and attitude, I'm not I'm not so sure. You know, he's a grown ass man, too. So um, I'm not sure if he's going to have a change or anything like that. And maybe this is all, you know, bullshit. And, and I don't know this guy personally, so I, I, I can't speak on these things. But, you know, from the from the energy that he gives and the, the things that I see when I watch him in the games and, and, and in interviews and his mannerisms and all those things, um, show me all these signs here. And, uh, yeah, we'll just see how it plays out. But if it's anything you guys can take from that, you know, just keep your ego in check. Um, be confident. Don't be overconfident. And yeah, man, show love. Always show love. So that's all I got for you guys today, man. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the International Podcast. I'm going to try to keep these complex videos coming. Um, So, yeah, guys, stay tuned. I got a lot of exciting content, um, a lot of interviews, a lot of episodes on the way. So stay tuned, guys. Stay blessed. Thanks again for tuning in with me. I'm out.